Hi guys, this is Margie. I go by King Cabbage Online and I am an animator. Today I want to show you guys how you can use just about anything you have around the house to get started with animation. You don't need to have a fancy light box, you don't need a computer. This is a basic eraser you can get at any store. Um, this one used to smell like peppermint. It's pretty cool. I actually got this one at a little Japanese store in California, which was great. But this is just a standard eraser. It's nothing crazy. Uh, I got a number two pencil that I just found in a cup somewhere in the house. Uh, it's an office depot, so, you know, it's nothing fancy. Stick eraser, because sometimes you got to get those small details. And we got some binder clips. Um, this is going to hold your pages together. So let's get started. I've just got some regular copy paper here from a printer. Today I'm going to do a blink animation because a lot of people like to do those when they're starting out. It's very satisfying. So I'm going to show you how I animate on paper at home without any fancy equipment. Alright, so first thing is I'm going to draw my eye and decide what it looks like. Let's do a cat eye. That's pretty popular. Cats actually have pretty round eyes till they're angry and then they get all tiny. So I'm just sketching out a little cat eye here. Uh, you can put a little shiny if you want. You can put all kinds of details. I wouldn't start coloring things in at this stage because it's just going to be a lot of work. So I'm just going to call this drawing one. All right, now the next step is going to be to draw the closed version of this eye. Now, we don't have a light box. So I'm going to do this by seeing through the paper. Um, it might be a little hard to see, but I think you can just make out the outline through the paper. If you have a window, you can also hold it up next to that. But the other thing is I want my paper to stay like very uh, organized. I want the two pages to be exactly lined up. So in order to make sure that my paper doesn't move while I'm drawing on it, I'm going to bust out my binder clips. I got these little ones at a craft store. I think they were on sale too, like a discount. And there, now my paper's not going to move anywhere. Because the other thing I can do to animate, besides being able to see through the page, is I can flip. Flipping is something professional animators use a lot, and we'll get into more of that later maybe in a future video, but for now I'm just going to go ahead and introduce you to the idea of flipping your page. So I can sort of see through here, the eye's going to close, this is where your understanding of anatomy comes in a little bit. What does a closed eye actually look like? So that's my eyelid. I might even draw a little wrinkle here to show where the, the sort of bulge of the eye is underneath. Another one here. You can do that to be fancy. Now the eye is opening and closing and as I flip it, I can see that happening. So this is the basics of animation right here. These are what would be called keyframes in an animation. This would be your first key and this would be your second key. I'm going to go ahead and call this drawing two. Uh, today I'm just going to real quick show you how to in between, which is to add a drawing in between these two drawings so that it doesn't look so flat. Because right now it's blinking, it's moving, but you want it to be more realistic, so we need to add more drawings to make that happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a third piece of paper, and now we're going to have to rely more on our flipping because the paper's so thick we can't see through every single page, and since we don't have a light box, I can only see the closed eyelid. I can't really see the, the open one underneath. So what a lot of animators do is they'll flip between drawings one and two to see where it's supposed to be, and then they'll draw the in-between based on that. And there's a fancy way you can do that with your hands where you can flip from your first drawing to your blank page, which is eventually going to have your in-between, and then you flip with your finger, this finger, to the third one, to the uh, third, it'll become the third drawing. And this will make more sense once I have the in-between. But this is sort of how animators flip when they need to flip in between two drawings and they're not using their light box. Uh, in our case, we don't have one. A lot of professional animators do this because that way they can see the movement. Instead of having to just blindly trace the drawing exactly in the middle, they can actually see where is it supposed to go. So I'm just going to flip real quick. And I'm going to eyeball it. Pun very much intended. I think that it's going to, the eyelid's going to start coming here. So I'm going to flip to see if that looks about right. Yep. Now, this technique is a little awkward at first. It just takes a lot of practice. At first, you're going to be like, I don't, I don't really know. I don't see it. I don't get it. But if you just keep at it, keep practicing it, 
you will start to get a feel for it. You can absolutely do this in the computer. If you're uh, animating in TV Paint or Krita or Animate or any of those programs, Toon Boom, you should be able to frame back and forth between your drawings. So you're not just using the light box or the onion skinning tool. You're actually looking at the movement and that's gonna produce a more realistic result. Okay, so I sort of have my in-between and if I flip like this, I can see it. But now what I can do, and I'm just gonna call this one B, this is so if the jocks push me over and the nerdy animator drops all her animation frames, then I go, eh, that's all right, they're numbered, and I can come back and reorganize them later. All right, so now I've put them in the right order and I can flip them like a normal person and not like a crazy animator. So I can actually just flip like this. And you can see that eye is sort of moving. And I went with one of the simplest things, the eye, just to give you an idea of how to use the binder clips, the fact that you can use just about anything. In a future video, I'd love to do uh, more advanced stuff, um, start doing like some of the classic exercises like the bouncing ball and show you guys some stuff about timing because I know I got some questions about that and I think it's what a lot of new animators want to know because it's one thing to get your images moving, it's another thing to make it look like they're actually coming to life. And a lot of amazing animators in the past have put a lot of work in researching that very question. So get out there and start animating. Uh, please comment with any more questions you have, any other future videos you guys might want to see and I might make this an ongoing thing. And yeah, see you guys later.